about this. This was a dream. Uh, this is not happening in real life. So I was, I was big and pregnant. I was like probably uh, two weeks out. And in the dream, we had not prepared anything. Like we had no nursery, nothing. Me and Jake were kind of like, guess this is happening. Like, I think it was one of those where it wasn't part of our plan, right? It wasn't what we had decided. It, it just had happened. And so as I get closer and closer to my due date, my parents kept trying to take me to the hospital and me and, me and Jake were like, we're not ready yet. We're just not, we're not gonna go. And my mom was like, what is wrong with you? I'm about to drive you my, there myself, you know? And me and Jake were just kind of like, well, we haven't bought any diapers. We really didn't tell anybody we were having a kid. Like, and both my, I mean, his parents, my parents were just having a fit. Like this, their grandbaby, let's go have the baby. And I was like, you know, I just don't know that I can do it. And she was like, what do you mean you can't do, you know, like you're gonna have a baby. But it was in that moment where I was like, I think sometimes, uh, um, it's, it, to me, it's funny, but we'll have situations in our life that we didn't plan for, that we didn't see as part of our plans or part of what we consider um, laid out for us. And so when it comes time to fulfill something that God's put within us, we're like, yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't actually prepare a place for this uh, in my life. I didn't actually create a, a, you know, I didn't get excited about it. This is just happening. And as silly as it sounds, you know, I felt like, I've watched um, a lot of Jeff Arnold recently, and he made the comment that, you know, people say, I'm pregnant with promise, you know, I, I have all these promises, and he's like, you know, promises are not self-fulfilled. We're the ones that have to, to, you know, fulfill that, and he was saying, you know, and I thought the Lord was kind of showing me, you're pregnant with promises that, or potential, but since you haven't made any preparation or you haven't seen this as a part of your plan, you're just in denial about it, kind of like, ah, well, you know, I'm just going to keep going until, you know, somebody, like, forces me to have this kid. So it was really humorous to me. The whole dream was really funny because if you know me, I'm a planner. There would have been, like, all these steps. And that was, like, me and Jake were, I was just sitting there eating. And my mom was like, we got to go to the hospital. You're having contractions. And I was like, yeah, whatever. But it was just really, uh, the whole thing was kind of funny and woke me up a little bit um, this morning. Because I do think that um, a lot of the times if we see ourselves on a path to success and, and we get derailed, um, I think we sometimes don't know how to readjust or to, to take those things into consideration. So how do you see success? Like how, what is some defining factors of success? And that's what the, the handout is for. But um, I want to ask the question, whenever you think of successful people, um, and I'm not just talking about in the church, but as a whole, what are some attributes that you immediately, that you can point to that are external that you say, oh, wow, that person is successful? What kind of success are you talking about? Just success as a general rule. Spiritual, physical, financial. Any of it. Because we all have those things that they all kind of bleed together. Like we'd like to believe it's just spiritual, but if you're financially not successful, you're not going to be real happy either. So I think they all kind of meld together. So what are some things that you would point to and say, that's that success? Nice car. Nice car. You'd be surprised that, that typically a lot of people will look at those things as external measures. Brother Cole. Brother Cole? What does Brother Cole exude, though? His spiritual success. Right? But he's content with where he is in life, right? Very happy. Yes. Right? Reputation. Right? I think that those are all great things. I, I think a lot of it, I feel like, is when all is right in the world in my life. You know, kind of everything has kind of lined out and everything feels like I have a handle on things, which we know can last like five minutes. But um, I do think sometimes my uh, contentment in, in whenever I feel like I have a handle on things is where I feel success. Um, but we all know God doesn't let that... That's not where he wants us. Like contentment is not necessarily his end goal for us, right? He likes to push and and move you around, and you're like, leave me alone. I, I don't want to do that. But um, I think sometimes we depend our success and we view ourselves through what other people think of our success. Sure. Right? Like how we get feedback on what we're doing in our lives. So if we're we're pursuing something and we're trying, it's very easy for other people to only see this part of it. And immediately start attacking it, or I say attacking it, but making comments, essentially. 
that sometimes can build us up or to, can tear us down. Um, but I also think that sometimes, you know, those external areas can be a real indicator of um, what we think other people are looking at for success. Like you said, nice car. It was funny, I told my husband, I went to um, get my daughter's pictures taken and uh, the photographer, I used to work with her husband in, uh, in a different position. In that position, I would it would be what you consider very successful. Like I, I was an executive, I, I, had, I did a lot of things, but there was a lot of, it was a very different culture to be a part of. Everybody had a new something, everybody, you know, that, that's literally, I had a, a guy waiting in the coffee room one time, I walked in and he was like, have you seen my rose gold ring and my watch that I just bought this weekend? And I realized he'd been waiting to tell, he wanted to show somebody what he had gotten, but this was the culture that I'd been around. And so me and my husband had decided a long time ago, I say a long time, probably about three or four years ago, we weren't going to buy new vehicles, we we're going to pay off the ones we had. It never bothered me until I pulled up to, and I saw her immediately. All those uh, feelings came back that I was like, she's going to see I'm driving the same exact car I was whenever she saw me last time, you know, immediately start preying on my sense of success, like how I viewed myself and where I'd line my values up started to shift based on who I'm sitting in front of sometimes, right? Like, and I literally had to talk to myself and say, what are you, what are you, what is this? And then I told my husband, I said, that spirit, I could feel it that of, of you're, you're not further along than you should be in this. Like you should have already done this, this, and this. And yeah. I was putting pressure on myself and almost kind of felt embarrassed. I was like, what am I embarrassed about? It runs, you know, like I don't really need anything else. But my values were still in that circumstance. I was seeing myself as less successful. And she never said anything. She didn't have to, but it brought back some of those feelings of being that competitive, like wanting to look successful to my peers. So um, with that, I think success, especially in the church, we think it means different things. So sometimes we look at people and we see them acting uh, in a ministry or we see them um, you know, participating in something and... Um, we don't realize sometimes maybe the work that went into some of that or the, right. the understanding or, or the, the, the pieces of the puzzles that have played out. And so um, success, I think it should be lined up with what God wants. And I think sometimes we some want to be in a category somewhere, sure. right? Especially with ministry or in, in spiritual aspects, like I do this and um, so success is defined as an achievement of something desired, planned, or attempted. And sometimes I think success in the worldly sense is more about authority, power, money, you know, a lot of those external things, right? Um, and, and like I said, I've, I've fought with those things before, depending on what environment I was in, but you could see where your values and it would line up to who you were as looking at as the authority in your life. So if you have you know, someone in, in your life that's mentoring you, that that's what they value, it's a good chance that that's who you're going to, that's what you're going to value as well. Right. You're going to start to shift those things and you're going to want those things because that's just a natural instinct. So you'll notice this with kids and parents. If parent values high grades but more over good behavior, you're going to have a kid that acts out, but they have make a, A's on all their papers. Right. Sure. It's not necessarily that you're going to have the same kind of balance in that way whereas somebody that's very heavy on they want their children to behave and they want their kids to be you know a certain way but school is, is kind of on the back burner you're going to see that shift as well right. and so I think sometimes whenever I'm looking at success I need to always be readjusting and realigning with God and saying okay where are you seeing this success because I don't see it right now right a, a, a lot of the things that we pursue we may not see immediate goals and and things completely taken on. So it was interesting when I was researching this uh, and a career site came up when I was like, Where are you? what is this about? But it said, um, how you define success will be based entirely on your own values, career ambitions, and life experience. Although you should be honest in your answer, it's also a savvy strategy to try and show how your perspective on success aligns with the employer's needs and would make you a productive employee at their organization. In other words, you're not going anywhere, right? Like they want you to still buy into this organization. 
But it made me it made me pause because I thought, how many times are my values maybe not lined up with, you know, my, my version of success is not where God sees my version of success. Like I may not see what what success is here. So do I adjust? Do I change that? Do I realign and redefine it? So would we describe Paul as a success in today's environment? Jeff knows I've, I've taught about Paul, this, this redefining success before in, in Ephesian. But if we looked at Paul as of now, if he was an evangelist that came through and he told us some of the horror stories that he had been through, would we think, man, this guy is lined up with Jesus. You know, he's <laughs> doing all the things. And probably not. We'd probably start to question why he was doing what he was doing, right? He says he was, uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, 24, and 25, says five time, different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Okay, I'd be done with those people. Like, just, just once is, is quite enough. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. And once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. Wow. That ministry sure is working for you. You know, like, I think in, in an all honesty in our flesh and the way we perceive things now, we would immediately think Paul had got it wrong. Like, where are, you, where are you going, Paul? Why are you always having to fight something? Why are you always, I mean, getting kicked out of places? Why is nobody wanting you around? Why is this always a fight? Because I think we've mista mistaken God's will for somehow like an easy transition, right? That success should mean that when I walk through the open door, it's like, ta-da, I'm here. And how often is that not the case? Right. At all. You walk in and you go, oh, more work. Yeah. Wonderful. This is great. More responsibility. More of these things that I was thought I was going to leave back behind there. And so we start to back away from the open door. I've done that before. I've told my husband, I didn't sign on for this. Like, you know, there's things that you walk into and you go, this is a mess. And I didn't know it was a mess. I thought it was an opportunity. And now it's now I'm realizing what I've gotten myself into. So, do we feel sometimes like we're not moving forward? Like we're standing still a little bit? Like we're just kind of treading water? Yeah. And sometimes how we tried something and didn't play out the way we thought it did, and we just kind of threw us off course. Like we completely started to look at ourselves and say, okay, you know, clearly I wasn't supposed to do that. I'm, this is not what I'm supposed to uh, achieve. I remember I went to a Christian school and I read books about missionaries that went to these places for the first time. Most of them were killed. Like we're talking about Africa and into the, um, the jungles and things. And I just, as a kid, I was like, God, why'd you send those people? I mean, they, all they, they didn't get anything done. You know, I literally looked at it very, like, I ain't going, you know, like, well, this is, this is a bad deal. Like we're talking about like some desperate situations that I was like, I saw that as a failure. I didn't see it as a success that they had done what God asked them to. I saw this as, wow, they were just kind of led to the slaughter. You know, like this, this was bad. I didn't see what doors they had opened by them going in the first place. I didn't see the opportunities for them to actually still be, be uh, you know, yes, they may have been killed by a certain tribe, but he, they still brought Jesus to a different one. Like there, you know, I was missing the big, big, you know, lights in front of me saying, actually, they got a lot more done than you think, but I was only seeing the end result of, that's just terrible, you know, like, ooh. Um, and so I did, for a long time, it bothered me that I was reading all these different stories about these missionaries that they were the first ones to go, and it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. I was like, man, I mean, you know, that stuff, I don't know, like, that would be, <laughs> that's a lot. And so, you know, many early missionaries were killed or run out of the country. And I think sometimes we immediately associate, it's the same thing with outreach. We think, I'm going to go do this, and then God's going to do this, and that person's going to come to church with me, right? We think there's a formulary to what, what's happening, and when we don't see it, we get immediately discouraged. And yeah. we're like, well, you know, me and my husband went for a walk this week, and we were talking about when we went to the park. And after everybody left, my husband had, uh, well, my daughter actually struck up a conversation with one of the girls, met the dad, 
Jake walks over and have a really, I mean, probably a 45 minute conversation with the, the uh, husband and wife. And so we finally leave and it was really like, we felt like, hey, that happened. But at the same time, Jake like, well, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't see anything directly coming from now. It's like, is that really what we're defining success as though? Like, it's an opportunity. Right. There was an opportunity that wasn't there before. Yeah. yeah, we're not seeing an immediate result from that. They didn't come to church with you and they didn't, haven't gotten baptized yet. But I think it's the same thing where we talk about, you know, one plants, one waters. Does I said, they're going to come across another person just like you eventually because we've seen it time and time again. But because we're in this mindset that, you know, two plus two should equal four, when it doesn't happen that way, when it doesn't line up, we immediately think, eh, done this wrong. So, um, anybody here plant or garden? You do? Yeah? Yes, do you have a question? Sorry. No, go ahead. You're good. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to talk about the plants first and then I'll do the handout. Okay. That's okay. Do you have a question? No, I was, you know, what you were talking about is, you know, we view success as, and it's so true because it's like, I'm going to invite someone, they're going to come to church, they're going to get the Holy Ghost, but like, that may happen, but it, you may never see it. Right. You know, it, right. it could. So it's still a success. Right. Whether, you know, and you may never know it's a success. Exactly. That's it, exactly. Yeah. I agree. Exactly what my wife and I were talking about this morning, what Jake's saying is a lot of times we feel that we need to see something all the way through so that, why? Well, we get the credit. Right. We put all the work in. We want the gratification. Yeah. We need that, that closure, that sense yeah. of closure, or that sense of accomplishment, or that mm -hmm. allows yeah. us to look at that as success. Yeah. When really the vision being promoted and the person being saved is right. what matters or whatever the goal is, that being pushed further mm -hmm. is what truly matters, not me getting the credit for having an exactly. idea or putting work in to make it happen. Right, exactly. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because this is not my notes, but my husband, when we were first married, he worked all over the place. Um, all over the U.S. and I remember there was so many people he taught Bible studies to and got baptized that didn't live here. So they didn't get to come to church with him. He got them baptized. Many of many times he would get to see them, but they were going home. You know, I I, I, I uh, joked and I was like, you know, the church never got to see the the fruit of that, but they went back to wherever they came from with a new experience, and he would try and stay in touch with them and things like that. But we didn't understand like. Why, you know, why is it these out-of-towners are the ones that are getting the Holy Ghost? We don't know. But had he not done what he needed to do, teach that Bible study, do what he needed to do, we would still be lacking. Like, somebody else is going to have to pick up that flag. I have one more quick thought. Sure. You know, the scripture that says, um, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Like, we think of that like that might you know I'm I'm gonna plant this seed and somebody might come water it and God might give the increase but instead of thinking it as like a maybe what if we thought of it like as an absolute mathematical formula like the seed I plant someone is gonna come water it and God's gonna come give the increase I think we'd be more prone to plant seeds exactly I, I totally agree yeah, so. uh, Doug was when he was in El Dorado they was knocking doors one that one Saturday and they knocked doors all down this one street and they come time to stop and so he went home. Nobody showed up from any of the houses they knocked, but on the same street, two houses down, a couple came to church and prayed through and got the Holy Ghost. And so it, God, God uh, right. honored, honored yes, exactly. their uh, efforts. Right. And uh, he, he provided the increase. Yes. It's funny, we were teaching a Bible study not that long ago, and the guy that was in the Bible study said he had, had, he had exposure to speaking in tongues. And we're like, oh, really? He said, yeah, I had a, a girl in high school. She was in the hallway, and she was by her locker, and she said she had, if the lights were out, he was there for uh, wrestling practice. Like 5.30 in the 5 morning. 5.30 in the morning, speaking in tongues. And, and how, me and Jake looked at each other and were like, she had no idea that she had planted a seed. Like she had no idea that he was like, he said, I was very respectful, very quiet and kind of walked. Yes, sir. It's kind of like Paul, I'm sure he got frustrated when he was in prison. You mentioned all the persecution. Yes. But, but it's like, I'm sure he told the Lord, hey, I could be out there preaching right. and ministering, but all I can do is sit in this cell and write letters. Exactly. Right. Still, right. still winning. That is exactly right. Yep. How many people here would think 
that's going to be an essential ministry. Right. I think a lot of us would just immediately discount that, right? Yeah. I mean, I'll be, I'll, oh, you know, what is your ministry? Uh, write letters to people. <laughs> you know, like, that's what I'm doing. I'm in the cell here. Woo! Not knowing it was going to be, you know, like, that's, that's what's so fascinating is I wonder sometimes <laughs> we're walking through something. I know pastor you think it's, of letter writing. <laughs> pastor of letter writing, yeah. It's my ministry. But um, so this is this is what's interesting too. Okay, so planting and, or gardening or anything, every plant is different, right? Every single plant that you get is going to have some kind of little tendency. I ca I've killed so many plants, I can't even tell you, right? I, I just have. So I wanted, there was a specific kind of plant that I wanted. It was a fiddle fig. I think they're beautiful. They're indoor plants. And so I got it and I was like, how hard can this be, right? It's an indoor plant. And so I plant it and we put, um, you know, put it in this thing and I got a small one because they're, they're less expensive. The other ones are like $125 and if I kill it, I'm gonna be real upset. So I got the one that's like $25, $30, right? And so I go by there and of course my husband's like, it looks like it's done, you know, and I'm like, ooh, and so Immediately, um, I start to panic and think, well, maybe I should water it more, you know, maybe I should do, and immediately uh, stuff, you know, I can tell something's not right, and the leaves are you're doing this, and they're dropping off, and I was like, I need to read up on this. I need to figure out, like, what what's going on here, so after, like, three or four times researching this, I was like, okay, we need to repot it, you know, and we need to give it a little bit more aeration, and it's only supposed to be watered once a week. Here I was watering it all the time. Grow, grow, you know, like, please. And we repotted it, and sure enough, like, but my shift in success was, this thing is gonna be great, it's gonna start growing uh, automatically, I'm just gonna keep, you know, doing what I'm doing to, don't die. Yeah. You know, success was, there's no more brown leaves. You know, it's, not, it's no longer dying anymore. And I think sometimes too, I mean, I learned a lot about them. So much in fact that I bought two more. I felt like, hey, I'm, I'm confident now that I know what to do if one of them starts to look droopy and things like that. But my success was had to change. Like what I thought was successful for this plant had to, had to change. And so when we see people and we think A plus B is gonna equal C and it doesn't, we can't just throw up our hands or, or, or get upset and think, well, this wasn't the will of God. I mean, how many times, and <laughs> you think it's funny, but how many times is it just like a prime example of the Lord's like, hey, would you just stop it? You know, you're, you're the one that's, that has these preconceived notions. You just do what I ask you to, and we'll get through this. So <laughs> it, was, it was really funny because to me, I felt like, well, everybody else can do this. I think that's what we do in the church, too. Well, everybody else looks like they've got it together. Everybody else looks like they're able to do this. And we don't realize that work still has to happen or that we need to reassess. Maybe I'm not at that level. Like, there's somebody else. I remember I had a friend that came by, and they were like, oh, you have one of those fiddle figs. Mine's huge. It's like this. It just grows and grows. And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate it. This is I've had it for like a year and a half, and I've just now got it to about like right here. Oh, that thing just grows like a weed. I was like, Arr! you know, but immediately it was one of those things that I had been working really hard at this, and she acted like she, oh, you know, she just bought it, and here, here we are. And I was like, thanks, I appreciate it. She had no idea, but it was just in my head that I was like, why couldn't it have been easier, right? Why couldn't this have just worked out the way, way it worked out for her. So instead of throwing it away though, I did what I thought was best and thought I could resurrect the thing and sure enough it worked. But I think some of us just throw it away. I mean, it's humorous now, but Jake will be like, you wanna throw this away? You wanna throw this away? You wanna throw this away? You wanna, you wanna, wait, this one don't look good. You wanna throw this one away? I don't wanna throw it away. You know, I, want, I really want to try and learn about what I've done wrong here. That's how I'm successful. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. You know, all the what you're talking about could could also relate to to people and like you're saying, put that little bit there, right? Instead of drowning them, you know, and then you know maybe somebody else sees okay, they need to put a little bit there. Yes. And then the other deal is that you know you're going along and all right, well. Let's, let's just not throw this person out because they they haven't shown any progression or right. any right. 
Like, uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. I think there's a lot of relationships and things that we pull the plug on too soon because we hit a road bump or we, we feel like they're not responding anymore and we're not getting anywhere. And, or even a ministry, like something that we, that we feel inspired by God to do that's no one else has ever done before. And because we get a few weird looks or like, uh, or program something that nobody's ever uh, achieved, but you're excited about it. And that excitement didn't come from you. It came from the Lord. And it's very easy for that to be killed, like very easily. Yeah. And if you're not willing to say, oh, we're going to dig up the, the around the roots a little bit more. We're going to water this. We're going to fine tune it a little bit. No one else will. You know, like that's yours. Yeah. And so one thing I was telling my husband a couple months ago, I felt in my spirit, I was like, you know, one thing we have to come to grips on is there is no Eden. Like there is, we all have to, you all have to do the work. Well, I think sometimes we think when we come to the Lord that we're going to go back to this you know, especially in ministry, there's some kind of paradise they're going to walk in. And there's still that communion with God, but we know we still have the toil that we still have the work. We still have to do those things. And you're going to meet a struggle. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times we walked through a door and it was uglier on that side than it was from where we came. And that wasn't the enemy necessarily. Sometimes the Lord wants you to say, I want you to dig a little bit. Yeah. I want you to learn about this a little bit. I want you to gain some knowledge on this first. Before you go two steps forward, I need you to stay right here. And like I said, I researched that plant to try and figure out. I watch YouTube videos on people that had these real tall ones. I wanted to know, but I could have just thrown it away. You know, I think some, a lot of the times I, I I listen to a lot of teachers and sermons and things like that because I want to be better at this. Yeah. I don't want to just stay and say, well, I've, I've taught Sunday school for a really long time and kind of just subpar it for the rest of my life. Where does God want to take this? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm willing to, I think, put the work in and research this and look for it, maybe the Lord can use me even even more than I've, I've seen in the past. But if I don't ever try... Or I don't ever pursue it any further because I think it's some kind of natural gifting. I think I'm going to be sadly mistaken in the end. So I want to address in the handout. What are two things that if you could accomplish them in your lifetime, you would feel like a success? And this can be anything because we're going to talk about the spiritual aspect of it. But we need to have dreams because if we don't dream and we don't have a vision of something for our life, then we're kind of just dragged around by circumstance. You know, we, we don't have a, a something to, to shoot for. And so what are something that if you could do it, that doesn't mean your life is complete. We're talking about you would feel fulfilled in some way that, hey, I gave back or I was able to do this and I accomplished this. That would make you feel like, you know, I achieved something here. I was a success. I can look back and say, I point to certain things that you I think of Peter being able to walk one or two steps on the water. Yeah, he ended up falling in, but at the end, none of the other apostles did. Like, it's it's the, it's those things that sometimes we think are a little scary, but we realize that, that those are things we need to be reaching for, looking for, trying to achieve, push it a little bit further. So I really want you to think about that, and I'm going to give you, like, a couple of seconds to, to write that one down. I, I no, I don't talk to them. Yeah, Should I? I heard it I heard it earlier. If you talk to your total thing, it's interesting. Really? <sighs> You didn't watch the right YouTube. No, I have talked to the one that's in my room. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you not participating in like the one in there? Kind of like you talk to your kids. That one's doing really good. You should behave more like your brother or sister. <laughs> but I have talked to that one. And I'm like, you know, oh, that. Yes, ma'am. You were talking about not giving up on things quickly. And I'm, I'm going to say, guys. Right, right. Exactly. You're not going to work with me. Then. Sorry. Yeah. And, um, yeah. My grandmother passed away last year, and I inherited a plant from the service. And it had been doing okay, and we had to go out of town. And it, for some reason, we ended up needing to put it outside. And when we came back, it was dead to me. Wow. Yeah. Somebody brought the pot. It was too heavy. I mean, bring it. Somebody brings right. it in. We set it down, and I'm like, that looks and, bad. And then I have this like guilt, like. Yes. Children, you know, like, <laughs> like well, 
what you would, you would immediately associated. Yeah. 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 So I thought, well, I'll water it. Let's see yes. what happens. And for a week, it just still looked dead. Like, right. Like, and I just kept dumping like my like little water bottle, and I would just dump it. In. And one day I came in, and literally just overnight, it was revived. It looked just like it had looked before, and I was like, like it's good. It's, it's nice. Yes. But how many times do we not give the same? I get really intimidated with reaching out to people if I haven't talked to them in, the, in a long time because I immediately like, how are they going to take this? You know, like I don't want them to feel like the only reason why I'm reaching out to them is because of X, Y, and Z. I want to rebuild that relationship and I realize I haven't talked to them in a while, but I've gotten to where I'm kind of like, look, if I feel it, I need to just go ahead and do it as much as it's very painful for me to have to do this because I'm kind of like, looking at my phone the whole time like they may never answer me I could be texting a weird person like I could be texting somebody that doesn't even have the phone anymore but it's in those moments where I have to realize like I need to just do my part and leave the rest up to God and and really and truly try and you know I'm trying to dig up the roots if I can but sometimes I'm going to mess up and well, sometimes I say out loud to myself like really realistically what is the worst thing that's going to happen if I do this like exactly. we make it so big in our right. mind Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, we said, what are two things that you can accomplish in your lifetime you would feel like success? So, I, me and my husband have goals for our lives, and we were talking about one recently, and I said, you know, you see this person that looks almost kind of like they've turned a business from a hobby to a, a business, and I said, I think we're looking at it wrong. They, they've been doing this for a very long time, and they were able to turn it into a business because it was on purpose. Like there's purpose behind it. So are you doing anything right now to work towards that accomplishment? Are you treading water or and waiting for something to happen? Or are you t still researching things? Are you still looking for things? Are you still, oh, I mean, I feel like this is something we can all do. What are we, what are we trying to invest in that opportunity, even though we feel like we're real far away from it? You know, like, are, are we still trying to seek it out? Are we still investing time and energy to make sure that we're fine tuning those things? So my husband had to read all these books for getting his license for ministry. Some of them really good, some of them more dry, you know, like some of them are difficult, a difficult read. But the whole point of it is, is you have to be prepared. You can't just say, I'm called to preach and I'm gonna go. But those, all those things are building blocks and so, I do a lot of reading. There's there's some things in my life I want to succeed at, and so I have to be purposeful and not just keep reading, you know, the the fiction or whatever I enjoy reading. And I have to say, okay, I need to spend 20 minutes reading this book to build these qualities or to understand a little bit more about this. And that has built into me. Now I really enjoy. I want to see the knowledge. Like I I read articles all the time, scientific ones. I really do try to understand how things work. But had I not started that, which in my opinion seemed kind of like this could just be terrible. You know, I'm just gonna sit here, it's like going back to college and reading a biology book. Or I could really try and invest myself into this and say, okay, 20 minutes. I would actually set a timer on my cell phone and be like 15 minutes or 20 minutes to, to make myself read this. And it's been very rewarding because I do feel like I've gained so much more out of it but I'm further down the road than I was before. Like, if I don't, if I wait for an opportunity, it's too late to prepare. I mean, pastor said this over and over again. You should prepare now because by the time the opportunity presents itself, it's too late. Like, here you go. It's kind of like the baby. I don't want to, you know, I'm like, eh, I haven't made a nursery, I haven't, I haven't done anything. And so if I'm always looking at certain aspects and, and not, you know, garnering any information or are really trying to dig this out, this is going to be a problem. So I was recently listening to a podcast about a weightlifter and he was talking about, he works with clients and, um, me and my husband like to do the, um, you know, reassess, like, what are you doing? Cause I told him, I said, I feel like I've been doing the same thing for like six months. Consistency is great, but like, am I stalling here on purpose because it's convenient and I'm not pushing myself any further? 
So I, I looked at uh, this guy and he said, you know, he come, works with a lot of clients that have unrealistic expectations. And he always says it takes years for a great physique. He was like, he was telling, especially women, they want to see something. They want to, hey, I want this to happen, or I want to, I want to drop this much weight, or I want to see this. And he said, you may not see immediate results, but every month you are looking better than the month before, and every month you are getting stronger. He says, men are more prone to looking at strength than women are as an achievement. You know, men want to be, I bench press this, or I can, I can lift this, or I can squat this. And he said, but women, it's all about feeling and and how you look and he said i've had to shift their focus and say what you really need to be focused on is how strong are you yeah has your strength improved have you done have you have you gained more now in strength than you did before a year from now will you be able to add you know 15 20 pounds to the barbell than you did before and he said that shifted them from seeing that trying to look at the immediate and looking at the long term and it was it was humorous to me because I think we do that spiritually where we want to make these huge gains. We want to we want to run, and the Lord's like you're still crawling. Like you know, I, I think we've seen this before, time and time again too. But we don't want to do the work to run, right? If anybody's ever run and, uh, and run try to run a, I remember I tried to run a five k after I'd had my daughter, and I was like, this is bad. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't put any work in. I just showed up and I was like, my gate was all off. Everything wasn't working. I was just like, I didn't put any time into this. I didn't put any effort in. I saw what I wanted to do. It wasn't that my, my want wasn't there, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything to invest time in this. I just thought I'll show up. You could do that in high school, Kayla, but you can't do that now. Like things have changed. But I think every time we see a struggle, we immediately are, are, are something that's going on when we see an opportunity. We see that as opposition or the enemy, or we think that it's no longer successful or that, that this is no longer going to be fruitful. And I think sometimes that's the Lord actually saying, I want you to hold up and I want you to grow right here for a second. Right. I want you to, to stop what you're doing and find out what this is. Mm -hmm. dig, it, dig it out a little bit. You know, we talked about Paul being in, in prison. Had he not been in prison, would he have had the time to write any letters? There was purpose behind his imprisonment, as crazy as it sounds. But how many times are we in a tough spot and we, all we're doing is fighting to get out? And the Lord's like, hey, I have something for you to do right now in this tight, tight space. And that, that hurts sometimes. And we don't see ourselves as a success. I guarantee you Paul thought many times he may have never written it down that, I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of where some of the places he's been held, but those were pits. This wasn't like, you know, a uh, prison here. These were holes in the ground where you didn't even get to see the sunlight sometimes. Right. You can't tell me he didn't have bad days more than most of us. And to think that you're fulfilling some kind of will of God in those tight areas and those dark places is, is a hard pill to swallow. But he had to trust in something more than himself. He had to realize that my success is not going to be determined by what my peers think, or what the other apostles are doing, what my peers are doing, what the people around me are free and walking around. But sometimes we have to be placed in some areas that are purposeful for us to get where God wants us to be, not right. necessarily where we want to be. And so... Um, so if we do not persist and we think it's the enemy and we take a couple of steps back and it's the Lord pushing on us a little bit, pressing on us, because I've, I've done this before where I want to just stop. I don't want to do this. It hurts. It's uncomfortable. Um, I'm not pleased. And, and the Lord's like, hey, that wasn't part of the deal. You don't get to just be in enjoyment all the time. I need you to woman up. And do this. And so I had to I had to reassess like what am I is it because I want somebody to tell me I'm doing a good job? Is it because I'm wanting some kind of, you know, reinforcement and I'm not getting it? Why am I not seeing myself as a success right now? Is it because I've allowed that to seep into myself that I want to see instant gratification? I want to see the things happening. And Philip uh, I can't talk. Philippians three, thirteen and fifteen. 
Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Jesus of God and Jesus Christ. Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be less minded, and if any thing ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Do you feel like you're called to a specific ministry? I mean, we're all called to some kind of ministry. But is there something that's been seed? This is on the handout. If there's something that's been planted in you, but you've not ever said it out loud, or you've never really kind of put your hands on this, the whole reason for this handout, honestly, is accountability. I'm not looking at it. You're not, you know. But it really is like facing ourselves a little bit sometimes and not having somebody come and tell you you know, how many times have we had people that we want somebody to tell us what our next move is? I want pastor to tell me, or I want an evangelist to come and pray over me. I want some, I want somebody a supernatural direction. And the Lord's like, I've been telling you all week where I wanted you to go. You know, like, I think he does it on purpose sometimes where he literally will shut the mouths of some people around you so that you will stop talking to them and start talking to him. You know, Brother Poe said that he was in a big prayer line and he said he kept getting in and they would never, never lay hands on him. He kept switching places and going to the end and going to the front. And he said, the Lord said, you pray for yourself. And he's because he was getting mad. They're skipping over me. Like, you know, <laughs> what's happening? And he said, that was a lesson for him to learn is that not every, there's moments in your life where God's going to take away some things that mirror some success in your life so you can stop relying on those things as indicators you need to look at my me as the indicator like we need to be on the same page mm -hmm. and so i'm going to ask too if it's if it's a ministry that you truly mm -hmm. are trying to you look for and you want to see are you doing anything in your life right now i'm talking 15 minutes 20 minutes a week to pursue that are you investing any time you know time is precious we waste a lot of it Yesterday, just yesterday, because I was stressed out about this, I'm scrolling through my phone, and I felt the like the Lord's like, you could do this, or we could go do what we're supposed to do. <laughs> you know, I felt like he was being my dad right then. I was like, okay. But it's one of those moments where I think we all have those, where we know we could be investing some time. We could be researching some things. We could be looking into stuff. But because it makes us uncomfortable, because what, what if nothing ever comes of it? Well, what else are you going to do? We can try to move this down the road, but God's not going to move it until you start moving. You have to take those steps. So sometimes those, those key factors are really so important. And so um, the, the rest of this really and truly is for your own time. The two spiritual things that define success in, your, in this area of life. And think about it this way. Don't think about your life as an entirety. Think about it for right now. Because your things are going to change. Your ministry may change. You you know, I, what I don't want you to do is to get so overcome with, well, when I'm 70, I don't want to be doing that anymore. You know, we're talking about like the next few years. But there's a key factor on here. The last one. Name something miraculous you want to claim in the next year. Something that you want that you know would take a miracle. That's an accountability factor as well. Sometimes we don't want to name it because we're scared it won't happen. Right. We're we're you know because we see that as a you know indicator of our spiritual success, and I really believe that if you write it down, Lord will either give you clarity on it, or He'll say, okay, you want that to happen? We're going to do this. This is what we're going to start doing. We're just going to start fasting more. We're going to start doing this. He will give you direction. He will clarify these things. That's actually what Paul says at the very last scripture. He says. If, and I think it's the New Living Translation. It says, if we be otherwise minded, uh, God shall reveal even this unto you. He actually says in, in New Living Translation, he says, God will show you. If you don't understand what, if we're not on the same page yet, God will show you and reveal that to you. And I truly believe that. If, we're, if we are pursuing those things and really looking for those aspects of our lives to redefine that and really look at it, I think you'd be surprised how, how much of an open door that actually will be. Do you have anything? I love it. That's 
thing? Yes, sir. There's three things that you can count on. Uh, the devil is never going to ask you to get out of the pew for the grace of some woman. Your flesh is never going to ask you to get out of the pew. So there's so if something tells you to go pray for somebody, or just to give any eye, it's not going to be your flesh or the devil. Mm -hmm. I think it when you it's kind of hits you in the face when Paul said I've been shipwrecked so many times you think I'm never getting out of this can't be God's will right yeah. the ship's wrecked I'm not I'm not going to do that but the next time when the ship wrecked, oh I'm done <laughs> right well, shook off the like, snake yeah, and the fire and the second was in prison I'm doing that before right you know, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. If, if you, the first time he was shipwrecked and he said oh this is not I'm not in God's world. Right. Something's wrong, and that's what happens. Yes, uh, and you think uh, I did something wrong. Right. He didn't. He was doing what he was supposed to do, but right. And yeah. but God saw him through it. But setbacks are not yeah. set, setbacks are not missteps. Mm -hmm. It's it'll be yeah. all right. Yeah. But I think in our lives, if we ever oh, you immediately think yes. Oh, you know, uh, we we start this to is, I'm out of God's mm -hmm. will. That's you know right. Poor little Jack still scared on the boat yes. since the rat day. Exactly. But right. he's still get over it. But you think about it. Would you get on back on a boat? Right. Ship? No. Nope. You've been shipwrecked two times? Or even just once? No. Yep. So one thing that I, and I told you before, Jeff Arnold has says has said I, I really love to listen to him, but he says, You will not possess that which you do not pursue. You can have promises all day long. But if you are not actually pursuing anything to actually make those come to fruition, do what you can, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. He said the Israelites, they were like, I'm pregnant with promise. He said, you died outside. That's what happened. Yeah. He said, you, you had all these promises. It was the next generation that had to actually take those in. Promises of God are wonderful, but they're also to inspire you to do something. Yeah. And they're not necessarily just waiting in the wings. Mm -hmm. Jake, Jake told me the other day, I think we take Wade on the Lord song a little too literally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it is, you know, that's that's our nature. We think that we're waiting for a sign or waiting for something. I cannot tell you how much benefit there has been in just trying to educate myself as much as possible on certain things that I felt like, hey, while I'm in this place where I'm where I'm kind of be fruitful where you are kind of situation. And I was like, okay, well, what can I do now? Like, yeah. where, where's the, and it, it has paid in massive dividends. Mm -hmm. So, that's everything. Anybody else? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So I'm new, but um, at my job, I have a group of ladies that we work as a team, and they often ask me, well, how are we going to accomplish this? What are we going to do? I said, we're going to work in the moment because right now we need to work in this moment to take care of this. And I felt like if we would get that in the spiritual mind when God is speaking in the moment, then, you know, we can see that success later. Sure. Right. Amen. Exactly. Amen. I agree. I had someone at one of my old pastor's wives years ago, I was a teenage girl, probably 15 or 16 years old. She told me this. She said, your stumbling blocks, what you go through in life can easily be turned into a stepping stone. Yeah. And I held on to that. This lady has now gone on to the Lord. But just a little reminder, what you go through in life, your stumbling blocks, what you do can just can be turned into a stepping stone Absolutely. and do the next right thing. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Well, that's everything I have. Awesome. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly.